This is my problem from chapter one, uh, from chapter eight, question number one. The first thing that we ask in these problems is, is this a problem about proportions or is this a problem about means? This one's a problem about proportions. That is, <clears throat> the random variable is a categorical variable and the, it's a yes, no question. Is, the, is an individual in that category or are they not? Next thing that we need to do is develop the three distribution diagram. Problem says that we're looking at a sample of 400 individuals. Interestingly enough, this problem does not tell us what the number of successes are, but they did calculate the p hat for that sample, and it ended up being 5%. The second distribution in the three distribution diagram looks at the distribution of all the sample proportions that are possible with samples of 400. So in other words, we look at every sample of 400 and look at the proportion of uh, the p hat for that sample. The third distribution in a three distribution diagram for a proportion problem is a standard normal distribution. We know that it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. We're interested in a 90% confidence level. So what we're looking for is some value z, so that between minus z and z, we have that particular confidence level, which is 90%. So let's write an R script that will help us find that z value. We know that the confidence level is uh, 90%. The amount out in these two tails we can find then, because we know that this is 90%, so the sum of these two tails will be one minus that confidence level, or 10. Some authors call those two tails, that area, alpha. Other authors count just one of those tails, alpha. Right now I'm gonna let alpha represent the sum of those two tails, so it's gonna be one minus the confidence level. I want to know the area in just one tail. So if alpha is the sum of the two tails, they're symmetrical and so therefore have exactly the same area in both of them, then the area in the one single tail will be alpha divided by two. So the z value will be found, we want to find a z value where we know the area, so that will be found by a quantile function. Since this is a z distribution, that quantile function will be a q norm. And uh, what we need to, to do is give <clears throat> R this green area. That's the area below Z, so it includes the confidence level plus one of these tails. So there's two ways to find that area. It could be found as the confidence level, that area there, plus this tail that's down here. Confidence level plus a tail. More traditionally, it's found by a subtraction problem. The total area under the curve is one, and this area up in this upper tail is tail. So if I take one minus tail, that will tell me that area. So Q norm will tell me this Z value because I'm giving Q norm this area that's below here. Now I'm going to need to know the standard deviation of this distribution of sample proportions. It's known that that amount is the square root of P, the probability of success here, times Q, the probability of failure, Q is always one minus P, divided by the sample size. The problem is we don't know what P and Q are. So the best that we can do is approximate that by using P hat times Q hat divided by N. So, that that value, that approximation for this standard deviation is sometimes called the standard error. So let's find that standard error. They had already calculated for us what p hat was. It's 5%. So there's the p hat that they had calculated because they had looked at a sample of 100 of them and however many successes there were, they had calculated that p hat for us. So what we'll need to do to find our standard error will be to first find q hat 
P hat is the estimate of probability of success, and Q hat is the estimated probability of failure, so it's 1 minus P hat. So the standard error is calculated as the square root of P hat times Q hat divided by N. Now here's what we know at this point. We know Z, which tells the number of standard deviations we would need to be away from the mean to have 90% of the population between minus Z and Z. We know that the our best estimate for the standard deviation of this distribution is SE. Our margin of error is Z times uh, SE. Okay, now we're only partway through with the problem, but that's all that they asked for. So I'd probably ask R to print out ME and then re report that answer in the problem. The issue here is that once we've found that margin of error, we would subtract that margin of error from P hat, we'd add that margin of error to P hat, and that would give us the confidence interval that would be a 90% confidence interval. But in this problem, all that they're asking for is that margin of error. We've found that margin of error now, and so that's what we need to do is ask R to print that out. 